Hello, everyone. Thank you for listening, and welcome to another installment of TPA's USPS Reform Podcast. This is a brief podcast where we talk about some issues that we're working on regarding postal reform and what's happening on the website and really just what's going on with the news and our coalition partners, any kind of work they're doing. So uh, TPA president David Williams is joining me again. David, thank you so much for agreeing to do the show again. Thanks, Michi. We'll have to get a guest soon to give you a break, you know, <laughs> um, but uh, we'll do we'll do that for the next one, hopefully. Now, I want to bring you on to talk about two issues, really different, very important, both about the USPS. The first one is a recent survey that was revealed and it shows that the problems with the postal service that we've talked about and we've looked at and so have our coalition partners and really everyday folks it's not just seen from us and from customers we're actually seeing some of the problems that usps employees are now dissatisfied too can you tell us more about this survey well, this is an interesting survey, and this was conducted by the United States Postal Service. So they did it themselves. They did it themselves. Of the, um, well, they they hired an outside firm, okay. but this was done to find out what their employees think about working at the at the postal service. And my first impression was that it was going to be very positive because. Um, if you've ever been to a post office, they don't seem to be in, in a rush to do anything for you. <laughs> um, they have pretty decent hours. And they we have, have one right near us. We do. I mean, it's literally the steps away from from our front door. Um, so I thought it was going to be a good, um, <laughs> a good nice survey pat for on them. the back. Yeah. right? I uh, bet you the USPS thought so too when they they put did. It and so InsideSources dot com this uh, this website they post uh, some of our op eds. Yep. Uh, great, great group, great yeah, organization. Great group, and what they did was they posted. They they had to do a Freedom of Information Act request to get the results. This is great. This is of the great. Um, uh, of this poll. Now, whenever you have to get a, a FOIA, a Freedom of, of Information Act, to get results of something, it's probably not going to be very favorable yep. uh, results. And that's what they had to do. They first asked the Postal Service. They said no, but then they uh, did the FOIA. So here we go, and it's it's not good. No, now I want to just recap this really quick before you reveal, reveal yeah. the results. So the USPS does this survey; it's for their employees, right? And and the logic would be, hey, we want to tell the world how much the USPS people love working for us. But no, they didn't tell anybody. They did a survey; nobody knew the results. So then Inside Sources goes and says, you know what? We're going to FOIA this because obviously they probably had to pay for it, which we'll get to. Exactly. And now the results come out and they are? Awful. Awful. Absolutely awful. Yep. There were 13 questions that were asked. And I mean, some of the uh, the questions, uh, this one question <laughs> is I think it's really funny. At work, my opinions seem to count. <laughs> now, the way Can they I take that survey? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I think we'll know what that yeah. comes out in. We don't need to pay for that one. <laughs> So that came out as very low. Now, the response, it's in the first percentile, and that's a little confusing. First percentile means that it's the lowest rating you can get on a, um, on a scale. And if you look at um, some of these o others, um, and this is kind of a strange question, I have a best friend at work. I, mean, I, I who do. Who cares? Who cares if, if you have a best friend at work? Are you moonlighting? <laughs> <laughs> and... The mission or purpose of my company makes me feel my job is important. Again, first percentile, the lowest rating that uh, could be obtained. So, so they ask a lot of these really yeah. soft, softball questions, hoping for a positive response from their employees. And what they get is the opposite. And when you say the one percentile, we're talking about absolutely the, probably the worst responses you can get. Yeah. And remember, these are employees. These aren't customers. Yeah. So... Um, I can only imagine what customers said when walking into a post office. Maybe they should be FOIA'd. Maybe they did one. That's very possible. Yeah. Absolutely. I didn't even think of that. Maybe there is I a... I just thought of it right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so so that's that's the real brunt of it, that we have the agency recognizing. Now, I... And we have, we have a link to this, and we will have a link to this, so you can look at the... Um, you can look at the, the inside sources op-ed and you know just see exactly the the rest of the questions and the rest of the op-ed just how that tough it was to get this information. Now I'm going to reveal the cost because you didn't reveal it, and I thought you would when I asked the question. But since you didn't, I'll go ahead and reveal the cost. The cost of the survey, one point eight million dollars. Yeah. Now, yeah, 
Don't you think that's absurd? Softball question, but I'm asking it. And why would they spend that much money for 13 questions? Couldn't you just send out an email to everybody? An email? An email. How about regular oh, yeah, mail? Oh, yeah, the USPS. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. Maybe the $1.8 million was all the postage they had that, to that is buy po- to that is possible. send it through the mail. But $1.8 million. So taxpayers likely paid for this. I mean, as we say, the taxpayers are on the hook for the USPS in terms of what they do because when they go... When they when they have losses, that's picked up by us. That's picked up by the Treasury, which is picked up by well, taxpayers. This is, this is a total waste of money. Yeah, you know the the fact of the matter is that this is you one would point think if they paid for one point eight million, they would fudge the results anyway, right? Or any good pollster knows how to ask yeah. a question and get a result. Yeah, I mean this is just um, <laughs> this is kind of uh, ludicrous. Yeah, um, it's ridiculous. So one point eight million dollars, they got these horrible answers and what are they going to do i mean probably nothing because there's no leadership at the postal service right now still, there's, the board yeah. of governors is still uh empty there's you know a lot of um vacancies at the board of governors so what are they going to do with this i mean this looks like an exercise in futility is that there's not going to be really anything that's done uh after this so that's 1.8 million dollars and i doubt that um any of the uh, employees at the Postal Service probably have read this. No, I, I would think you're right because, uh, you know, you don't want the gossip around the office being, well, who's your best friend? I thought I was your best friend when yeah. people start saying they don't have one. Um, now, this survey also tells us that workers understand that there are problems with the agency. Um, I, I'm curious that even though it is ludicrous and it was a waste of money, is there any way, now that it's been spent and now that the results are out there, is there any way that this can be used in a positive way to move reforms forward? Any kind of reforms, anything. I mean, can we get something good out of this? Uh, inside sources well, went yeah. through the trouble to FOIA it, and yeah, now folks are I, talking about it. I think there is. I think there is something positive to, ta- to take from this, is that Congress needs to see this mm-hmm. and needs to realize that it's time to redo the Postal Service from top to bottom, um, starting inside the Postal Service. Yeah, they've got a morale problem. You know, whether it's halting Saturday delivery, um, closing more offices, you know, purchasing vehicles in a responsible way. Stop getting into other services. Stop getting into other businesses. Absolutely. So, you know, hopefully this is just another reason why Congress pays attention and actually does something because... You know, it would be one thing if the morale was very high at the Postal Service, mm-hmm. but it isn't. It's at an all-time low. Uh, they're you know, hemorrhaging money. You know, the past four or five years, upwards of $50 billion that they've lost. So yep. this has to be On a wake-up. to lose more. This has to be a wake-up call for the Post Office, and it has to be a wake-up call for Congress that time is running out and something needs to be done immediately. Now, I want to shift now to the second issue. And it's interesting that you talk about Congress because this this is an issue where Congress actually, you know, took up some issues here. But it, it's not related to service. It's more related to another issue. So uh, I want to briefly talk about it. Last week, the Senate uh, took up in the Judiciary Committee, I believe, um, took up the issue of growing the growing opioid, opioid academ- yeah. epidemic yeah. here in the United States. And how the United States Postal Service is actually being used to traffic drugs. This is how important is this issue, David? Well, you know, it's important. It's obviously important, and it kind of took us by surprise. Yeah, me, absolutely. Because, you know, we've been focusing on the vehicle purchase, the Board of Governors, the other businesses yep. that they're trying to get into. And, you know, we didn't see this coming. All of a sudden, it kind of hit us in the face that. Well, yeah, people are using the Postal Service to deliver drugs. Yep. And this is really, um, you know, internationally. Troubling. It's very troubling that the Postal Service is being used. There are very few safeguards. I shouldn't say safeguards, but uh, the Postal Service doesn't do a really good job of examining packages as it goes through uh, the system. Um, They use a, a paper system, which really is incomplete, uh, to give you an example, the um, UPS, United Parcel Service, is um, is using an electronic system, and they're able to monitor and inspect their um, uh, their packages a lot better than the, the Postal Service. And, you know, it, it's interesting that now we're seeing a, a real harm 
to to people yeah. uh, with this opioid problem with these uh, these drugs coming into the country. So again, it's just it's another thing on the list for Congress to look at. And you know, luckily, Congress did look at this, and they start are starting to ask some of the uh, the questions. Um, and just I guess it was a couple of weeks ago, we had members of the Senate Homeland Security and Government Affairs Committee. Um, they gathered to ask important questions yep. about the about this yeah, epidemic and, and really some of the um, uh, you know some of the problems with how it's, the drugs are getting into the country via mail. And, and and I will say that as issues like this happen, it at least helps to shed some light on the agency. And you know, again, very bad story, very bad situation, but we hope it can lead to some positive changes. Right, and we're not saying that the postal service should go away. There no, are no, no. there are people that want to privatize the postal service, and we're not quite there yet. Um, what we want is them to focus on first class mail, is not to be distracted by um, the new businesses yep. and these other things. And, things and, and, and what I think is interesting is I want I really want people to go to that inside sources piece, and I'll tell you why. Read the comments because there are a lot of comments from people who are mail carriers or work in the post office, and they talk about the problems that they have and why their morale is so low and some of the problems. And obviously some of the comments are nonsense and the usual trolls, but <laughs> it's um, it, it's interesting to read the comments on uh, the, the inside sources piece because I think you'll get some insight, not, not just hearing it from us and looking at the result, but I, you know people that work inside the post office and some of their problems. So go ahead and do that. And I'd like to ask you before you go, just anything you expect down the line in the next few months about postal reform, Any anything good, anything new? I mean, what do you expect to see going on forward, at least least in the in the near term when we talk about this these issues well i'm concerned that time is running out in this year i think we yeah. have about 60 days left in the um, uh, congressional session for for this year and i mean this is 60 days and it's may 2nd so time is running out quickly they have a lot of other things to do but that doesn't mean they can't hold hearings yep. they can have oversight hearings yep. um, i heard that um, there was going to be an oversight hearing on the price of uh, drugs for pets I mean, come on. We really need to focus as a country, and Congress needs to focus on what's important. Now, granted, you know, pets are important to people, but in the grand scheme of things, fixing the Postal Service, doing comprehensive tax reform, getting the spending bills right, yeah. there's so much more that Congress can be doing. Um, so the limited time they have, and listen, they're taking seven weeks off in the summer. They don't have to do that. They can take two weeks off. They can take a week off or no time off. I mean, there's a lot to do. I mean, obviously, they're not going to listen to us about their vacation plans. But <laughs> there's plenty of time left in the year to do this. It's, it's, it's their choice. It's by choice that they're not doing these things. And, um, again, you know, who knows? How much is the Postal Service going to lose this year while Congress just sits around and watches it happen yeah. when they should be proactively That's trying to fix it? It's actually a great point that to end it on. Well, David, thank you so much for uh, joining us. And, we, again, we hope folks go to Inside Sources and go to our, our website and our social media. We'll be promoting it because it is critical that people understand yeah. that this problem is not something that's just from us talking. It's from people who actually live it every day. Act yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much, David. Thanks, Michi.